Well, 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 hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Quality and today I will be trying something new. I, oh, that looks stupid. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I, um, have a ton of books to read and I have yet to read them. And I initially started this channel because I wanted to get extra practice for doing narration m voiceovers i forgot what I, what I wanted to do but i've also come to a realization that i've while i do read a lot of text in game i don't actually like get to read a lot of my books and i actually have a really really long backlog of books to read and so i thought um I would read some of them on in the channel. I'm not gonna read all of the whole the whole entire book because this particular book that I'm gonna look at today is Unnamed Memory. This one I've actually already read. Um, I'm only gonna read through the first chapter. I'm gonna do this as a like a review slash preview um, series. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it up, but I'm I'm filming this to guess get the ball rolling see if it's a viable if it's a series that i should continue doing because i know when i go to not the bookstore but barnes and nobles which is a bookstore but i only go buy books at barnes and nobles now i i always just head straight to the manga section and then i always pick up books and then i'm like oh i don't know if i like it or not and i have this weird thing where i'll i don't like like standing there and like reading it like bending it and reading it because then like you know they're paperbacks so when you bend them like this it kind of stays curled like that and i absolutely hate it so i hate standing there and just like flipping it open like that and then like putting it back on the shelf because i'm like oh now someone's gonna get like this an ugly ass like pre-read book and it's gonna be all bent and it's just gonna look ugly so i don't like standing there reading it but also, I don't want to go like pirate it because then I feel bad for the authors because they spent a lot of time writing these books and I feel bad if I don't support them. So I end up buying them. And then sometimes I just, I don't know if I like it or not, so I don't even buy it at all. So I thought maybe someone out there would find this helpful to see if they want to um, read the book. And because COVID has us all staying inside, we can't go to the actual bookstore and then flip books open anymore. And even if you do, you feel awkward because you're like, oh, now what if like, you know, I had like the bacteria or the virus on my fingers and now someone else is going to pick it up and they're going to get sick and stuff like that. So we're kind of iffy about touching stuff now. So as they don't always have that function to read a little excerpt inside, I thought I would read the first chapter of the books that I own which is quite a lot quite honestly so I can't do reviews for all of them because I haven't read all of them obviously but I will read the first chapter of them you could also help use this to help you fall asleep if you like I don't know maybe you need some ASMR need someone to read your story if that works out for you that works out for you I'm just doing it because I have a ton of books to get through and you know practice basically so without further ado we are going to read unnamed memory the very first book and the little subtitle i guess you guys can't see it. it says the witch of the azure moon and the cursed prince by kushi furumiya and the drawings in this book not that you can see it because i'm putting it on the wrong side the illustrations in this book are really, really, really nice if it's, it's like the prettiest artwork I've seen ever. And I'm very, 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 very picky about my artwork. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, once you open it, you get to see basically the, I don't know where my camera is, <laughs> the first page. And then you see what I mean by the artwork being really pretty? Like, it's so pretty. Like, oh my god. And then a table of contents. 
this book the well this book is pretty and it's I really like it but the illustrations man a witch who lives in an azure tower a cursed prince if they could rewrite time what would they do with such power this is the story of what happens when everything is overwritten I'm not quite sure how long it's gonna be um, I looked at the first chapter and it's like 26 pages um, when I read on my own, I read about a page a minute, but I'm not sure how long it would take me to read out loud. So we'll see as the first episode in this maybe continuing series. Oh dear lord, I hope I ever remember to edit that out. A curse in the azure tower. In the wilderness stood a tower of the fairest azure blue. The surrounding landscape was sparse, adorned with only a few patches of grass. In the midst of that wasteland, a young man on horseback looked up at the lofty spire. So this is where the tower... <laughs> so this is the tower where a witch lives. There was not one shred of excitement in his tone as he gazed at the colossal structure. The young man had hair so dark it was nearly black, and he had deep blue eyes the same color as the sky after sunset. The quality of his clothing and his graceful appearance spoke to an innate elegance. That was not to suggest he was frail, as his muscled body also exuded an aura of constant readiness. One who looked upon him would liken him to a commander on the front lines of a battlefield, despite his young age. He was about to dismount and stride up to the tower when a voice whined from him, a voice whined from behind him, giving him pause. Your Highness, we really shouldn't. Shut up, Lazar. What would I be if I faltered here? Shaking his head in exasperation, he turned back around. The young man who had just been called Your Highness was Oscar, the crown prince of the kingdom of Far Faris, the lands that extended east of the tower. Oscar's retort to the attendant, a childhood friend he had brought with him was his own, as his only companion, brimmed with confidence. After all, we managed to break out of the castle. Wouldn't it be pointless if we went back now? Let's, it's just some light sightseeing. No one goes to a witch's house for sightseeing, Lazar protested. A witch. There were only five throughout the entire mainland. Perhaps owing to their tremendous power, they were treated as separate from everyone else. The Witch of the Forbidden Forest. The Witch of the Water. The Witch Who Cannot Be Summoned. The Witch of Silence. The Witch of the Azure Moon. These were the common names of the five. The witches appeared only when they themselves desired it, using their almighty magic to summon disasters and then promptly vanish. Over the last several hundred years, they had come to symbolize fear and calamity. Of this quintet, the one who possessed the most powerful magic was the Witch of the Azir Moon. Thank you, motorcycle. She had erected a suitably Azir tower in the wilds beyond any country's borders and lived at the very top of it. It was said that she would grant the wish of any who climbed to the to the pinnacle of her great spire, but as word spread that such but as word spread that such challengers never returned from the tower, fewer and fewer people dared to even approach it. Oscar and Lazur had come to this dangerous tower with a specific purpose in mind. I told you, it's just as dangerous as I thought. What will you do if the witch magnifies your curse? asked Lazar. Now an airplane is here? I'll deal with that if it- if- bleh. I'll deal with that if it comes. I don't have any other clues, do I? And immediately after the airplane, a big old truck comes by. There are still other ways. I'm sure if we look, we'll find something. Oscar listened to Lazar's pleading as he dismounted his horse. 
He took up the longsword in his saddle and returned to the. <sighs> he took up the longsword in his saddle and returned it to the sword belt at his waist. You mentioned other ways, but none have been found in fifteen years. First, I'll meet this witch of the Azure Moon and ask her how to break the curse. If this is a dead end, I'll go back to the Witch of Silence who cursed me in the first place and get to her get her to undo it. Flawless, right? It's not flawless at all! The Tsar whimpered, sounding close to tears as he finally dismounted from his steed. His skinny, gangly physique was wholly unsuited for battle. He wasn't carrying any weapons, but that was because the two had uh, had, had left in such a hurry. The Tsar jogged after his lord, much like he had done he must have done when they escaped the castle. Your Highness, I understand your feelings. But the reason no one's contacted the witches in 15 years is because it's too dangerous. Any search for the witches for the Witch of Silence has been fruitless, and no one's climbed the tower of the Witch of the Azure Moon has ever returned. True, it does look a bit tall for taking the stairs, Oscar said. The tower's walls were made of a blue-tinted crystalline matter that or material that made the structure appear to blend into the sky. Oscar craned his neck to look all the way up the tower, all the way up toward the hazy, indistinct rooftop. Well, I'm sure I'll figure something out, he said. No, you won't. It's supposed to be full of traps. If something was to happen to you, how would I possibly return to the castle? What would I say? Just act like you really, really sad, Oscar shrugged and ambled off. Wait, I'm coming too! The Tsar watched Oscar go and rushed to hitch both their horses to a tree before hurrying after him. It had all begun 15 years ago. One night, a witch's proclamation suddenly echoed throughout the castle. Never again shall you have children, neither shall that son of yours. The blood of your family will tear a hole into a woman's stomach. The forest royal family dies with you. Oscar didn't quite remember the exact words the witch had said as she cursed them. What he did remember was the shadowy silhouette of the witch with the moon at her back, and how his father's arms had trembled as he held Oscar. At only the age of five, Oscar hadn't understood how serious such a pr pronouncement was. He, was sim he had simply recognized that something bad must have happened because of how the color had drained from his father's face. Oscar was the king's only child. This curse had threatened the lineage of the royal family was a well-guarded secret. Few knew of it. Most of those had been exceptional or most of those being exceptional mages and scholars who had been searching for years to find a way to break it. In contrast to such a dark thing to bear, Oscar himself had been bright, had been a bright, brave boy who's mastered both swordsmanship and scholarship. Because of his brilliance and good looks, many had high expectations for his future, though they knew nothing of the curse. They would murmur, in time, he'll be a king remembered throughout history. If the curse wasn't lifted, however, all he'd leave behind was an ill-fated name. At the age of 10, Oscar came to understand that the curse meant what the curse meant and began searching for a way to break it. Unfortunately, no matter how many books he consulted or leads he chased down after practicing his swordplay, Oscar hadn't even found a shred of a clue to show for it. Fifteen years had passed since that night. This man who would become king someday had traveled westward beyond the borders of his country and now stood at the foot of the azure tower where a witch lived. Well, let's go, Oscar said. You can't just open the door so callously. Be more cautious! With Lazar shrieking in his ear, Oscar pushed open the double doors and stepped inside. He looked around and found himself in a round, spacious hall. The center was an open atrium, and a passage on the right-hand side led up. It was not a staircase, but a gently sloping path that hugged the wall and extended up in a corkscrew shape. Oscar craned his neck. The whole tower appeared deserted. 
looks just like the records, I guess. At least the entrance does. Does this satisfy your curiosity? Lazar asked shrilly. Let's keep going. Come on, up we go. According to the records left in the castle, the tower was fraught with several checkpoints. The witch would grant the wishes of those who made it past these challenges and reached the highest floor. Oscar's goal was to do just that. Checking to make sure his beloved sword was still at his waist, Oscar set off with Lazar and Toll. There was no handrail along the passage, and Oscar could see that it would led up to a round landing. Some sort of huge stone slab had been placed there, and Oscar headed for it as he climbed up the path. Lazar was trailing behind timidly. It's dangerous, so you wait here. I'll be back by sundown, Oscar called. No, I couldn't do that, answered Lazar. For quite some time, Lazar had been following after Oscar, starting with when Oscar had first escaped from the palace, and Lazar had ended up in some nasty situations because of it. Each time, he rained complaints down on Oscar's head, but it still didn't look like he planned on abandoning his reckless lord. Oscar regarded Lazar and smiled faintly before turning to continue upward. As the two approached the landing, they saw it was about the size of a small room. A list of numbers was car carved into the stone slab in the middle. Oscar started to think of solutions as he strode up to it, and Lazar piped up in a quivering voice. Your Highness, that... I'm thinking now. There's most likely some sort of commonality, Oscar said, cutting him off. Not that! The snakes! There are so many of them! I see them. The floor of the landing was overflowing with writhing snakes. There was no wall separating the landing from downstairs. What kept the snakes from escaping the landing was most like was likely some kind of magical barrier. Oscar remained undaunted. He crouched down and grabbed the head of one of the snakes that was sticking out into the passage. They're not venomous, so it's fine. They're just here to get in our way. He tossed it over his shoulder, earning a scream from Lazar. Oscar p paid it no mind and stepped into the midst of the serpents. When he approached a stone slab, he put his hand on his chin and pondered. The rock had been placed to obstruct the passage upward, so Oscar couldn't proceed. He mulled this over, ignoring the snakes winding around his feet. While Lazar let out little shrieks as he gingerly picked his way to his lord. This was most likely the first checkpoint. Oscar nodded, his eyes on the stone slab. I got it. This is the mathematical theory suited studied about a hundred years ago in a small country to the east. It was famous among mathematicians for being an unsolvable problem. Unsolvable? At the time, yeah, but someone figured it out around ten years ago. The witch in this tower really knows her stuff. Oscar reached out and touched a slab. The spot where his finger connected lit up with a faint white light. Following that trajectory, he input the answer, and then... The giant stone slab crumbled into sand. At the same time, the snakes writhing at Oscar's feet vanished as though they'd been entirely illusory. Astonished, Oscar, gasped, Oscar gaped around the landing, which was now distinguished only by a mountain of sand. I see, so that's how things work. Shouldn't we go home? Lazar pleaded. No way, it just got interesting. Lazar chased after his spirited lord as he continued to climb up the path. The top of the tower was still so very far away. The wind that blew through the windows on the topmost floor was always somewhat dry. A voice called out in a large, disorderly room with books piled all over the floor. We have the first challenger in a long time, master. The person speaking from the doorway was a small child of about five or six years old, judging by appearance. Its youth had pretty features, but a blank expression, making it difficult to discern their gender. Their emotionless voice gave the odd chill a uh, their emotionless voice gave the odd child a doll-like quality. The witch's child's shaped familiar looked at the table. No one was there. 
atop the table sat a lone steaming cup of tea. It had been there for over an hour, but showed no signs of cooling. The one person who should have been there had, was missing from this tab, tableau. <sighs> I moved my camera, so now I'm not in this shot anymore. However, the attendant received a reply right away. A challenger? How rare. I thought everyone had forgotten all about this tower. There was one a month ago, too. Er, there was one a month ago, too. They couldn't solve the first stone slab puzzle and ran out of time, answered the child. The traps in the tower were changed regularly, but ever since the first checkpoint had been set with this current challenge, not a single contender had managed to get past. Perhaps they hadn't thought they'd have to solve an impossible math problem right off the bat, and a tower said to, ha to have the most difficult obstacles in the entire land. There also weren't many contenders to begin with, so it was no wonder the owner of the tower had misremembered. The familiar reached uh, with their mind to sense the challengers very far below them. It seems like the ones this time around are making steady progress upward. Would you like to have to go take a look? No, the real fun starts on this level, if they can actually reach it. Indeed. Witches were beings better off lurking in the shadows of history. While this one's exact whereabouts were unknown, very few humans could actually make it past the tower's perilous checkpoints. The witch had no desire to re reveal herself, content to wait for others to reach her. She sang out in a clear tone, Go, Litola. When our guests fail, be sure to take care of things. Yes, master. A dry breeze wafted in. The familiar she had called Litola disappeared, and the witch, floating upside down on the ceiling, cocked her head. She muttered to herself, holding an open book to her chest. Even if these two are advancing at the moment, no one makes it past the first guardian beast. So, I initially said I was going to read the whole entire first chapter, but as you guys can hear, my voice is kind of giving out. Then not because I'm reading a lot, but my voice is kind of giving out. And it has taken a lot longer to get how many pages to read. I think I read um, the first seven pages, which it does set up the story. Um, I, I read this book already, as I said in, at the beginning of the episode, or at the video. Um, I did read this book before, but I, it was a while ago, so I actually don't really remember, like, all the minute details, but there, um, is a really, really good book. If you guys are looking for a, um, light novel to read, I really suggest this one. There are a couple other ones that I also really, really like, but uh, I'm gonna save them for other episodes. Um, I will show you some of the artwork because I love the artwork. It's so pretty. Like, look at this. It's, <laughs> I'm moving it the wrong way, but it's so pretty. You could probably pause the video and read that page too if you wanted, but you wouldn't understand because it's like middle of the book. But this book is really, really good. It's like a... It's a romance story, but not quite a like straight up romance, like rom-com kind of thing. It's very cutesy, very, very... <sighs> I don't know how to explain it other than it's, it's a fantasy romance novel but it's so adorable like the relationship between the two main characters is very very cute it's not if you guys used to read like mortal instruments and books like that where it's like romance novels aimed at teenagers i used to actually really love that series too but growing old and reading those books it's like they fall in love and then they do the dumbest things ever for the sake of love and it's like well I guess when you're young and you're in love you do dumb things but I get so tired of reading the same thing over and over that's not this this is like a cute love story but they're all mature adults but it's not like those like adult if you're one of those people that love the young 
adult fiction books because of their settings and their themes and stuff, but you don't quite necessarily like the adult fiction books because they're like high fantasy stuff. This is like a good in-between for you. I really recommend it to you. It is $15 at Barnes and Nobles. Um, you can probably buy it on Barnes and Nobles or at Book Off if you want to buy it a little bit cheaper, secondhand bookstore, or rent it from check it out from your library or wherever you can get this book. I really recommend you guys reading this book because I absolutely love it. And yeah, I think that will be it for this um, episode. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about this book other than y'all should go out and read it because it's amazing. Um, as of the day I'm recording this, there are four books and this is the very first one. So go and check it out. It's amazing. But that will be it for this video. Um, I may or, I'm probably going to continue this series for a little bit longer, see how it goes. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. So please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next uh, video. Bye bye. Thank you.